Well, welcome back, family. Happy sunshine. We're picking up on page 18 of Parker Still's testimony in the grand jury in Knoxville, Tennessee. So a question by Miss Davidson, the U.S. Attorney. And so let's talk. How Tell me about the motorhome. The motorhome is, as we previously, as we just discussed, we see a transaction of funds of $493,110.68 being wired from USAA to Whitney Bank, another FDI, I'm guessing he means FDIC, insured financial institution located primarily based in Louisiana and again this was for Mr. Bean's purchase of this motorhome. Mr. Bean this was at Buddy Greg here in Knoxville. Mr. Green Mr. Bean was actually arrested by us while in the vehicle in the driver's seat with the engine running about to, you know, about to take off. And so that's, that is, that is where the bulk of the funds went on this case was for that purchase. And so tell me about why Whitney Bank and Buddy Greg took this money. Okay, did they, did they ask questions about why somebody is paying $99,000 in cash for a, a motor home or... Yes, ma'am. They... Let me... Let me back up just a little bit there. It didn't take too long... It didn't take long for USAA to realize what had happened. Semicolon right? Question mark? I mean, you know, this, this type of money, these are, these are good investigators at USAA. So they do, they reach out to. It's my understanding that they reached out to Buddy Gregg and to Whitney Bank in order to, to, you know, basically let them know that this money is potentially fraudulently acquired. So this is where we see the introduction of a lady named Heather Ann Tucci. T-U-C-C-I. Last name, Giraff. J-A-R-R-A-F. And this is where we first, I think this is supposed to be C, first see her come into come into play. And the reason we know about this is because of recordings have been posted online that we've required and listened. You know, various of us have listened to some or part of all of these. I know I've listened to part of them or the relevant stuff here, the Wow. Line 10 through line 14, guys. He's talking about the videos and he's saying some really strange things. And the reason we know about this is because of recordings have been posted online that we've required and listened. You know, various of us have listened to some or part of all of these. <laughs> he doesn't even know who to name for watching these videos. Like he's testifying about various other people have listened to some or part of, of all of these recordings. Uh, this does not fly, guys. No way. 
I know I've listened to part of them or the relevant stuff here. The, how, how do you, here's the question guys, how do you know that you've listened to all the relevant stuff if you haven't listened to all of it? I mean, he's just admitting here he's done an incomplete investigation. Bringing recordings in or referencing them in a grand jury trial and not having listened to them? Are you kidding me? I would never testify about any kind of recording unless I had heard it before a million times. Wow. And who put these recordings online? You know, I'd be speculating as to that to say exactly who put those online. Well, this is about the most honest thing that I think Parker has said in, so far in either the identity hearing or in the grand jury testimony. You know, I think, I just know I'd just be speculating to put those online. But what happened is, so these, this is, what is, <laughs> What happened is an interview or a meeting takes place at Buddy Gregg. We've been able to verify participants at this meeting were individuals, salesmen, and another individual, Buddy Gregg. Mr. Bean is also present in the room as identified. In, in the room? Oh, okay. Well, hold on. So he's just describing what's going on in a video is what it sounds like. Okay, so there was a recording about conversation that happened with the RV dealership and and Randall Bean, who is identif who is present in the room that the recording is taking place in. Okay. And we also hear a lady by the Ms. Ms. Giraffe identify herself on the phone. And what, what she does, she holds herself out as an attorney representing Mr. Bean and Mr. Bean's trust. And I want to make the, I want to make the grand jury aware that she, she, apparently she is an attorney. Oh, look at that. Apparently she's an attorney. Bam! She's not licensed in the state of, not currently licensed in the state of Washington where she at one time was licensed. And she's not licensed in the state of Tennessee based on our research. <laughs> what, the research that you only looked at the relevant parts of? Some of all of it? So what she does here is she makes representations that she is, she's representing Bean, that those funds belong to Mr. Bean. She, she repeatedly confirms, Mr. Bean is asked by her to confirm that these are your funds in front of everybody. She suggests two things. She suggests, she's throwing out issues that may be here. She says, well, she, and this is quote, quote, well, maybe there's a problem with USAA. Maybe there's a problem with the source of, with the source funding of bank, end quote. I, which video? Which recording? Is this actually verbatim? It's got quotes around it. So it's my, from listening to this recording, I feel that she, well, just to summarize it as saying, it was an attempt by her to convince Buddy Gregg and also later in a call a representative from Whitney Bank. Remember, Whitney is the one, is the bank who received the funds to convince them that the funds belong to Mr. Bean and the, trans and the transaction should go through. And since Mr. Bean was arrested by the FBI, excuse me, and since Mr. Bean was arrested by the FBI, is that correct? He was arrested. 
just to clarify, he was arrested by us on, he had an outstanding warrant on a state charge. <laughs> this, is, this is not how you would testify about a warrant. Just to clarify, we arrested Randall Bean on an outstanding warrant out of where? North Carolina, Florida, Wyoming on a state charge. No, you, then you'd say for charges of whatever. Wire fraud, bank fraud, failure to appear for a ticket, assault, whatever, whatever the charge is. That's how you testify. Not see this is amazing. This I didn't realize that Randall Bean was arrested before the grand jury. That's that's amazing, guys. So that's what the bogus warrants are that BZ mentioned, I'm guessing. I'm reauthoring my perception about this case. I used to be under the impression that Randall Bean was arrested after the indictment. Well, we're just finding out now that he was arrested before the indictment. And this is why, yeah, because this indictment or this grand jury, if they issue an, an indictment, that's the grand jury saying, hey, probable cause exists in this case to warrant an arrest. But he was already arrested. Wow. I mean, this was just on July 18th here, guys. And they're talking about stuff Randall Bean did from July 5th through July 11th. Wow. And so Parker still, to cover their butts here, they're making it clear that Randy Bean was arrested on an outstanding warrant on a state charge. This Basically, he's saying that Randy Bean was arrested on a warrant. He's not giving any information about that. Uh, and that's important because they arrested him before probable cause was established by this grand jury. Do you guys get that? I want to see copies of these other warrants that BZ says are bogus. Wow, let's... Go to the IUV website. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know that I want to go digging through. This is a monster page, guys. So I remember that that Randy Bean had some other warrants, and that's why he was not released right away or at the same time that Heather Ann Tucci is released. Hmm. Wow. This is very important, guys. He was arrested before the grand jury. Are you kidding me? On a warrant of a state charge with no details? Wow. And since that arrest, have has Ms. Tucci Giraffe, or however you say her name, have things been posted online regarding that? Yes, ma'am. We've seen a video now. A video and audio where she explains about Mr. Bean obtaining CDs, cashing them out early, which I would say to the grand jury that show, that, that shows knowledge. And the U.S. attorney says yes. And continuing, Parker still says, and she admits to following along to make sure everything is running well and preparing legal documents. She stated that the coach deal, I say, when she says coach deal, I take that to mean the motor coach purchased from Buddy Greg was successful 
and homes were going to be next. Based on my investigative experience, that to me means that. They had success on this type of transaction. They were going to try to do something with real property next. Yeah, he he's not very articulate, guys. I I still can't believe that this is a a lawyer defense and prosecution wise. A FBI agent, a judge, trained at JAG. No, I, I just, something's going on here. She stated in there that Bean wanted to test the scheme out and see what the road bumps were and find solutions to those. That was, in part, just a summary of, of this, of this recording that we see. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm guessing you hear recordings, but I get how we just go on autopilot with our speech. And so what do, do you know what the website was for all this stuff was posted on? I do, ma'am. I may have to. I don't know that it's relevant. I just, yeah, I can get that for the grand jury if, if necessary. So they're not even, they're not even telling her where these videos were sourced, or her. They're not telling the jury where these videos were sourced. How strange. And then Miss Davidson saying, I don't know that it's relevant. I just, and then right here, Parker saying, yeah, I can get that for the grand jury if, if necessary. Wow, what? She asked a question, and I think it's pretty well relevant. Hey, Parker, where did you get those videos? It's not relevant? God. Oh, well, I'm not sure which juror this is, but asking a pretty interesting question. It does seem strange that they would put it online. I'm guessing this is Parker. Yes, ma'am. To where it would be accessible by... Oh, and then she gets cut off. Well, do you know whether or not this scheme such as this has been online? Yeah, there has been... Not this exact scheme, but there has been videos published out, one in particular that we've, we have knowledge about that describes a scheme very similar to this. I think it's something phrased like, quote, learn how to pay your bills, end quote. It's, it's definitely uh, out there, a scheme similar to this. Wow. I, <laughs> It's not the exact scheme, similar. Wow, they really... This doesn't make any sense to me, just this whole line of, of questioning and, and the vague answers that... And the way, the way U.S. Attorney Ms. Davidson, I believe her first name's Cynthia, I can't remember for sure, but she's cutting off the juror. The, the juror's in the middle of flow here and she cuts off the juror. The juror doesn't understand. The juror's making a blatant observation and Miss Davidson cuts the juror off, asks this really weird question and then we get this really vague answer it's almost like they were just keeping the volume and the but the dialogue going to take the energy away from that juror's question
There is a... Oh, I found it. It's in my prose memo. I provided... I knew I. I-UV. Wow, so there's IUV website. This is a... The... The... Wow, so this is a... That was a question from Miss Davidson and Parker's cutting her off. The the most of the we see it at a website i-uv.com is where is where we see was where that video was was on and and wasn't that uh linked back to youtube wasn't it a youtube video that was posted on iuv it's my understanding from our cyber guys. Wow. Wow, this is like experts agree, comma, insert your propaganda. Some people say, comma, insert your propaganda. It's my understanding from our cyber guys, comma. Wonder what kind of propaganda we're going to get. Two that maybe, again, I'm not an expert in this field, but it could have been on YouTube. Could have been. I'm not sure about that, but it could have also been on some of that. He shouldn't be testifying about this. From our cyber guys? Who? Pull out a report. Say, you know, Bob Smith of the Cyber Crimes Unit. He's really good at tracking down all this stuff, and I believe he said it was YouTube. I'd need to check my notes to give you a definite answer. Not sure about that. <laughs> but I-UV i-uv.com is where you know we all seen it and a juror's asking a question what does that mean i-uv parker still says i don't know ma'am i'm sorry i-uv.com i-uv.com wow So the U.S. Attorney's asking, and so in, is she on a video on this website explaining everything? Yes, ma'am, the, the, she is on the video, and it has, and actually at the bottom left on the screen is, it has her initials. Like there's a couple of people on this video. It's kind of like a webcast almost is how I would describe it. And on the bottom of it, it has her initials on it, if I remember right down at the bottom left. And so she, so there's an audio, which you listen to of her. There's an audio out there at the, at the dealership. That's, that's we've obtained offline. Then there's a second video that where where she you know explains kind of what i said earlier about how mr bean obtained the cds and cashed them out early and on this website are there in fact like the bill of sale from the motorhome and other things such as that i have seen that i can't recall if it's this specific website but posted on but posted it online where it appears to me, again, based on my investigative experience, that this, these documents were posted online in an effort to show, look, he really did own this. You're wrong, government, essentially. <laughs> what? Which side is he testifying for here? I mean... So this is a really good question from the juror. Gosh, the jurors are the most articulate ones in this courtroom. So to clarify, do you think those postings are directed towards the government? 
if I may, my name has been put out on, on you know, for public, in public forum by, by some individuals, you know. Who? Who are some individuals? Gosh. And you're, based on my investigative experience, that's, that's like experts agree. God, what? Why don't you, based on this document that I found, investigative experience, God. We would refer, we would refer to it as, I think, I think our cyber guys said that they may be trying to dox me which would refer to that as any information that's available, you know, about me online, they would try to put it out in the public forum. Again, that's my understanding. Yes, sir. Wow, I've never heard this term docs. So I'll have to go check it up. Check it out. So I, so to answer your question, yes, I would think that. What was the question again? It's been so long. Oh, that was the juror's question. Okay, were these were these directed towards the government? I would think that. Hmm. I mean, gosh, this is just so vague, guys. This really feels like they're gaslighting the jury. So U.S. Attorney Davidson, but they, or sorry, but did they, did, does she describe the purchase of the CD with the Federal Reserve routing number? She, she, I'll, I'll remember from the video, actually have, I have it with me, the, the, she does talk about that. Explain how Mr. Bean obtained the CDs and cashed them out early. Now, specifically on the federal routing number, I cannot recall if she says that specifically. What's he even doing in a grand jury hearing, testifying? And it's obvious that he doesn't even understand this case, guys. So back to Ms. Davison. And so based on everything you've just told me about, is there evidence that Bean and Tucci Giraffe knowingly conspired, confederated, and agreed with each other to commit money laundering? Yes, ma'am, there is. <laughs> he hasn't supported any of this, guys. Does she describe the purchase of the CD with the Federal Reserve routing number. He doesn't remember. And then he says, actually have, I have it with me. The, the, she does talk about that. Explain how Mr. Bean obtained the CDs and cashed them out early. Now, specifically on the federal routing number, I cannot recall if she says that specifically. I mean, he cannot recall what's in these videos, and yet these videos are being purported to the grand jury as evidence of money laundering. Ah. <sighs> Words have meaning, guys. Money laundering is different than bank fraud. Money laundering is when you've got an illegal business and you got a ton of cash that, wow, I'm going to raise a lot of eyebrows if I spend this much cash out into the economy. Like I've got enough cash, I really want to be buying homes and stuff. So I set up another business 
and I'm a client of this other business I set up and I just pay consulting fees to this other business and I don't get any consulting but what I get is oh I gotta pay a little bit of taxes but now all this big pile of money it's a little bit smaller but it's clean it's on the books and it's okay to spend it's been laundered what they are talking about is something different than money laundering and I cannot believe that this question is coming out of the US Attorney. Now, if anybody else out there has a different idea about money laundering as a definition and thinks that it ties into this case, I'd be interested to hear that argument. But right now I'm really surprised that she's using this term money laundering. Yes ma'am there is. It's not like she just asked this this question and all he's got to do is say yes. So when you look at the timing of all this, this is what's amazing to me. This, the, basically the minute the CD is funded, he transfers it to Whitney Bank. I mean, you know, within a day or so. And then Parker says, within a day or so, yes ma'am. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. It is not, the money does not stay long, which is, which is characteristic of money laundering. <laughs> oh, guys, this is not money laundering. <laughs> oh, oh my word. Obviously, if you leave it in the bank, what happens with his... The larger sum, the approximately 945 figure I gave you earlier, the bank will catch on and grab the money back. In this case, though, he pulled out a significant portion and bought the motorhome with it. Well, this is where we're going to cut it off for right now. We'll just say that we're at the, we made it through page 25, so we'll just start up on page 26 on line 1. If you've got any love, light, or links for me in this matter, or any of the other ones, please send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot, and we'll be back soon with another installment of this transcript. Peace out.